Hello, I am Ashwin and I am presenting our work on enabling an hexapod robot to learn to walk using online reward based training of a spiking neural network. These are the contents of our presentation. Let's start with the introduction and motivation. Animals and insects walk using temporally correlated movement of their legs, uh, which is generated by neural circuits called central pattern generators. In this video, you can see this ant is walking using three legs at a time and the legs are alternating between the two time steps. At every position, the balance is preserved and the motion is in the forward direction. This is called tripod gait and this is observed in many hexapod insects. The CPG given gait forms a closed loop system with the sensory inputs like vision and balance. And so study on cockroaches shows that the balance sensor, which are the vestibular sensors, modulate the gait when the terrain changes and also vision modulates the gait in case of uh, predatory behavior or pre predator avoidance. So this closed loop system forms an interesting bio uh, biomimetic electronics because the spiking neural network offers low energy consumption and also the decentralized processing can be taken at, can be taken advantage of for energy efficiency. This is the mimic of hexapod robot with the legs uh, labeled using the neuron numbers. And when the CPG which will produce gate in this robot uh, is created using the spiking neurons, this is how it looks. So this is six all to all connected network of neurons where each neuron is connected to a leg and spiking of a neuron causes the particular co corresponding leg to move. So the quest here is to understand can a gate be learnt online using the sensory inputs that are there on board. Uh, where the hexapod robot doesn't have any prior knowledge of the gait and it learns to walk by trying out different combinations of its leg just like an animal would learn to walk. And if this kind of a learning task is to be undertaken, the gait that we will get at the output, will it be the biologically observed tripod gait or will it be something else? So this is the system we envision, this is, this is the CPG shown in the previous slide which is being triggered by two input neurons. All neurons have this leaky integrate and fire behavior. And this is the exploration step where the t as the time progresses, different number of neurons spike and for every spike we have a reward based training of the spike uh, of the synaptic weights. So at every column which corresponds to one time instance, uh, a set of neurons is firing like t at t equal to 0, n2 and n4 are firing and therefore the corresponding legs are being moved. And for these uh, set of legs being moved, the onboard gyro sensor will check if the balance is being preserved or not. And an onboard camera will check if the motion is in forward direction before and after the step. And depending upon these two conditions, uh, the reward will be generated which will modulate the synaptic weights of, of this network. And, uh, and the expectation is that during the exploration phase, the synaptic weights get modulated such that after a while it converges to a stable gate where both balance is preserved and the motion is in forward direction. So in this case, you can see the tripod gate is expected at the output where Neuro alternate neurons are firing in alternate time steps. So this kind of a network we have built a closed loop system for this where the camera and gyro sensor provide uh, sensory input which are actuated using the hexapod and the, the outputs are fed back into the sensory inputs to, to progress the algorithm. So coming to the methodology, uh, this is the hexapod robot and this is the corresponding CPG. The neurons fire alive behavior as mentioned previously where alpha is the leaking coefficient and the weights from all the previous neurons are going to drive uh, the voltage of a corresponding neuron. So the tripod gate looks like this. At t equal to 0, the input neuron fires which triggers the CPG using the synaptic weights and the voltage in the CPG neuron starts building up. At t equal to 1, we expect th a set of 3 neurons to fire. and using the uh, the input internal weight by weights the next three neurons fire in the next step so this is how the tripod gate is supposed to evolve and therefore the task of getting a tripod gate using this robot is basically about training the synaptic weights such that this kind of a spiking pattern is observed so the synaptic weight training is carried out using reward based training as explained previously this is a more detailed look at the algorithm so at the beginning of every time step, we read the gyroscope and take an image using the onboard, onboard camera. Now the input neuron spikes to trigger the CPG neurons and depending upon the synaptic weights and the uh, uh, membrane potentials of the neurons, a set of neurons fire. Now the corresponding legs are to be moved in the next step. So what happens is depending upon which neurons have fired, the corresponding le legs are lifted and when the legs are halfway through the air, the gyro sensor is red again. 
and the final orientation of the gyro sensor is compared to the initial orientation to find out if the balance is lost or not and if the orientations are closed then this means that, that the balance is being preserved and a high reward is given for such a case. Similarly, now at this point if the balance is being lost this is sure to give a erroneous gate and therefore the legs are put back and the motion also gets a negative uh, reward because there is no forward motion with when the balance is being lost. If in case the balance is being preserved the leg is put forward and the motion is completed and then we take another image and this image is compared to the original image to see if the forward motion is occurring and if there is any rotation in, uh, in the step. So the desired pattern is forward motion without any rotation and the balance preservation and the image also generates a reward and now both these rewards are combined and they modulate the weights of the of this network using a random number which is the stochastic updates of weight. So this algorithm pro pro progresses for every time step and this repeats. So every step is basically a previous weights driven spiking of CPG neurons followed by reward based modulation of the synaptic weights. For so in the previous slide I explained how the gyroscope reward is calculated. Now coming to the image based visual reward. These are the uh, images by before and after taking a step and using these two images you can see that a forward motion must have occurred because the objects are at the same relative position but they are now closer. Now the odometry based inference of whether a forward motion has occurred is taken from this work and this depends upon photometric error calculation between the two images. So for every image a scan line for that is computed by summing up all the pixels in a column and they are plotted here. So scanline 1 and scanline 2 correspond to the, these two images and now the scan lines are shifted and subtracted to see where the minimum difference in the photometric error occurs. So this is the expression which gives that. So for every pixel value the scan line is shifted by those many pixels and subtracted from scanline 1 and the photometric error that we get at the output is plotted here. So as expected as we go as the if the rotation is too much the shifting is too much then the, the difference is going to be large because the images have not rotated much and this shows that at a pixel rotation of 3 pixels the, the difference between the two images is minimum which shows that the rotation value is small. The absolute intensity uh, difference the absolute photometric error at the minimum rotation point corresponds to the forward motion that has taken place. So here you can see though, though although the, the rotation value is small the absolute intensity error is pretty large and it is of the order of 0.3 of the total uh, photometric maximum photometric error that we get and this shows that a forward motion must have occurred. So the cases that ar arise are three cases if the rotation is large then we conclude that the reward has to be negative because a rotating motion has is occurring which is not expected. If the rotation is small and the error is also small then this corresponds to no motion and if the rotation is small but the absolute error is large then this corresponds to a forward motion and a positive reward is given for that. Now by using these two rewards the weights are modulated and this is uh, this is the section where I explain the results. In this you can see the, how the algorithm progresses. So as the algorithm starts the number of legs start oscillating and the algorithm is now ex uh, experimenting with different combinations of leg patterns and for every leg pattern it is going to get a reward which is plotted here. Because at all these time steps the it is going to get both positive and negative reward the reward stays low. And at the time instance where it figures out the tripod gate where three legs are being used in every time step, it is going to get a positive reward because the both forward motion and stability criterion are meet here. And now this point onward a steady positive reward is going to get accumulated in the device. So this is the simulation based setup and now coming to the demonstrations. In this video you can see that the, the robot is exploring different combinations of legs and it is losing balance for every one of them and it is restoring back to the original position. This will continue until it finds a combination where the balance is preserved like this and now it moves forward and in this case it has picked up those three legs which are required in the tripod gate of ant as shown here and now it starts walking like a hexapod insect without having any information of this correct gate. But because the algorithm is stochastic and the weight updates are modulated by a random number not all gates converge to this stable tripod gate and there are other alternate gates that we observe. So in this case a similar exploration is happening but at the end of it what you will see is the legs that are lifted for forward motion are not the tripod leg. -like. So in this case these three legs do not correspond to the tripod leg, tri tripod gate leg but this is still giving us the forward motion and stability criterion weight. 
This is particularly interesting because uh, evolutionary study on horses shows that a gait at a particular speed consumes the least amount of oxygen. Stated differently, what this means is the nature is minimizing the energy consumption at every particular gait. So, it becomes interesting if we can, so in a future work setting it becomes interesting if we can incorporate the efficiency term in some way in the reward uh, to, to ensure that the gate converges to only tripod gate and not some other gate. So, the hyperparameter in the learning is the learning rate given by gamma in the previous slide and this is how it alters the convergence pattern. So, convergence here is not the convergence to the minima, but convergence to the tripod gate and in the 70 percent of cases uh, independent of learning rate you can see that the algorithm converges to tripod gate. In the remaining 30 percent it still shows the forward motion, but using alternate gates that I showed in the previous slide. And this is the number of convergence, convergence instances it takes to convert and this is how it varies with the learning rate. It almost remains constant and this convergence spiking give, can now help us to estimate the energy consumption. So, mean number of spikes issued, median number of spikes issued for convergence are five, around 500 and if we implement this system on a dedicated neuromorphic platform like LOHI, the energy per spike is 1.7 nanojoules. So, the total training energy is of the order of 850 nanojoules and after the system converges to the correct tripod gate, the energy per step is less than 10 nanojoules which makes it perfectly suited for energy constrained edge robots. Coming to the conclusion, this is how this com work compares to the different previous methods. The novelty here comes from the fact that entire processing is happening online because we are taking advantage of the end to end processing from sensory inputs to actuation. And this is allowing us to explore the true aut autonomy in learning which the online uh, learning based system is allowing us to do. The second uh, advantage of this system is the previous methods use uh, complex algorithms like evolutionary algorithms or back propagation and our simple reward based modulation of weights bring, brings down the energy cost as explained previously. So, in this case we are exploiting the end to end online learning and it is energy efficient compared to previous algorithms and the alternate gate is opening up exciting future research for gate optimality research. So, these are the key references used and thank you for listening, please ask any questions that you might have.